This is gonna be awesome. Check this out, RC drivers. We've got a Vanquish VS410 Phoenix Portal Kit on the workbench to check out today. And I'm really excited about this one. It's not a brand new kit, but uh, I've had a few RC crawling friends reach out to me, say, Greg, you gotta try this. And luckily I was able to get my hands on one so I can show you guys. Now this is really a high-end kit. Uh, it's actually more of a budget kit for Vanquish. It's got composite axles in there, but it's got a ton of other features. And of course, the quality is top-notch. I mean, anything that comes out from Vanquish is, is really just high-end in my opinion, but this is an affordable kit. You could get the base kit itself for $3.99 and they're running some promotions with some wheels right now for $4.99, but this kit, it just looks like it's gonna be a fun build as you can see the box is small it is a full build-up kit and you have to supply all the electronics and building equipment to get this thing together which is what i have to do now so with a little bit of video magic there it is what an awesome build the phoenix was this thing went together really well there was just a few little questionable areas in the instruction manual and actually they've updated the manual online. So if you do run into any issues, uh, it's mostly in the transmission with some of the clips, uh, you'll be able to go online and get the thing together. But man, doesn't this kit look absolutely cool. Threw a little bit of Tamiya Champagne Gold on the body, uh, painted the fender flares on the outside with uh, some tracks of spray paint. And man, this is a great looking machine. Now this is kind of very cruiser-like as far as the body goes, but uh, Vanquish went and took it to their own level and just made it a great looking rig. It's a very narrow body. Uh, as you can see, the tires kind of stick out from the sides and it just allows this rig to really do what it needs to do. You don't have to worry about the tires catching on the body here. Uh, everything has been thought out for you. So it's really just built to perform and you don't have to worry about making any adjustments on your own. So the body is actually a multiple piece body. I love the grill on here. Uh, it accepts uh, 10 millimeter LED lights from the factory. However, I have some incision lights in there. Uh, they even give you masks so you can mask out the windows. There is a full interior in here. And uh, let me spin it around so you can see the back half of the multiple piece body. The, uh, the rear panels are separate pieces. They go on this nice molded cage that bolts up to the cab itself. Uh, everything just fits together perfectly. And what was really nice is the body was already pre-cut from the factory. So I didn't have to really do anything other than really paint it. And it was really easy to paint uh, with this particular paint job. I uh, love the look of the rear of this thing. Uh, I've got LED lights uh, from that incision kit. But man, love this body. Now it actually hinges up. Uh, there are two body clips in the rear that go into the rear bumper and there is a hinge in the front and it's just so you could go and do quick battery changes. If you need to do any work, the hinge pin that's in the front slides out really easily and you could remove the, the body, which I'll do right now. I'll just show you underneath really quick. Uh, everything just fits together perfectly. All the holes are pre-drilled from the factory. And now we could check out the VS410 Phoenix Portal chassis setup. These guys really know what they're doing. Uh, this is the VS410 chassis itself, the, the ladder frame chassis that we've seen before. I absolutely love this kit. I mean, look, instead of just, you know, little cross braces here, we have full panels of composite plastic to really strengthen up this chassis up front here. I mean, just look at all of that cross bracing that they've molded in. Uh, there's actually two spots to go and mount servos. So you could go throw a winch servo in there if you want to, and then you've got your steering servo spot, but it's a really great chassis. I love the look of these metal frame rails. It's even got the Vanquish logo etched in the front. Uh, we've got dual shear shock mounts. Check out the fuel cell out back. You could actually go and throw the receiver in there, but you're gonna need some long uh, lead extensions to get the receiver back there. So I've actually just thrown my receiver up on the, the floor pan. And back here, just a really small stubby bumper, actually part of the body mounting system. Uh, but you know, you've got that decent angle there. You, you're not gonna hang anything up. Same with the front bumper. I mean, you, we've just got the small stubby front bumper that will go and slide over anything in front of it. Again, everything here is built to perform. Uh, love the inner fenders up in the front. Of course, in the back, we really don't need that since we have an open bed. Uh, even a radiator, it's, <laughs> I, you know, you're not gonna really see it. Actually, can you see it? Yeah, you could kind of see it through the, the grill up front, 
But uh, you know, they've got radiator fans in the back. Again, more detail, which is just really cool in this kit. Now, uh, as far as building it up, I mean, everything on the chassis itself just fit right into place. I don't have any real tips or anything to share with you guys there. Uh, just make sure that you have everything on hand as you're building it before you start uh, assembling this thing, if possible, like the servos, uh, the servo arms, any extension wires that you may want to get, depending on the type of electronics that you pick up for it. Uh, I, I would just say it's easier to have that stuff on hand rather than installing it later, especially when it comes to the motor because it's uh, down low in this chassis here to drop the weight down. So, you know, getting that out. It's, it's fairly easy, but it's just better to have everything on hand to start. Let's move on to the, the bottom of the chassis here, just so I can show you really quick. Uh, see those floor pans, really nice. I uh, kind of like how they semi-boat shape the bottom here. So nothing's gonna get caught up as you're driving over rocks and stuff. Even the skid up front uh, just goes all the way to protect that motor. And you know, it's not gonna hang up on anything when you're sliding over the rocks. All right, uh, let's move on to the transmission now because this is a huge part of this kit. This is the VDF twin transmission. Now this transmission is set up for shiftable overdrive and a uh, dig. And they're actually three position dig and overdrive functions. And it's, it's a little bit on the complicated side. The transmission goes together actually very smooth. It's got a slipper clutch up front. Don't wanna forget about that. And it does go together really well. Again, there is a update in the manual online if you wanna check that out. Really nice components inside, chromoly shafts and full ball bearing, of course. Now, the drivetrain, again, it has shiftable overdrive. And let me see if I can remember all the functions. It's got way more functionality than I think, than I think I'm gonna use, actually. But uh, as far as the dig, you can switch it from four-wheel drive to just front-wheel drive and have the rear freewheel, or you could go and have it shift so it locks out the rear for the full dig and still has drive in the front. And then for the overdrive, you could go and shift it from uh, the 6.5 gear ratio, I believe. Uh, I'll correct that with text if I was wrong there, to 33%, so that is a big jump. You could also go and have a rear wheel drive, if I remember correctly. There's, there's again, a lot of functionality to it. So really insane setup for a RC car transmission. Now it does take some time to go and set up the servos in order to do that. I think it actually took me almost two hours to get the ser the, these two servos here. These are your uh, overdrive and dig servos set up in order to have all that functionality. And when you set this up, you really wanna do one servo at a time. And, and you know, if you're building one of these, I really recommend you listen to what I have to say here. Uh, you know, because if you don't set it up right, you could burn out your servos. And that's certainly something not anybody wants to have to deal with. So what I recommend doing is actually setting up your linkages and then removing one of the screws, you know, on either side here. Uh, remove the other servo from the receiver completely. Don't have this powered up if you haven't adjusted it uh, because you know if it's not adjusted right, it's gonna start to heat up on you. So you wanna do one servo at a time. So uh, setting up the dig, uh, again, take out one of the screws, have it to the forward position, drop your screw back in, see where it lines up with the arm, and then start to adjust your endpoints and, and move your endpoints back until that screw will just screw right into that lever by itself without any strain on it. And then take it back out and flip your switch on your radio system so it moves the servo horn all the way back so you could go and adjust uh, the end point of your uh, you know, second position or your third position actually uh, for the arm there. And that just goes and ensures that you're not having any sort of strain on the servo, any sort of strain on the levers in there and you don't burn anything out. So hopefully I uh, explained that correctly for you so you don't burn anything out. Same with the, you know, the dig servo. Actually, I think I called that the dig over there, but that's the overdrive. Again, so much going on here, but anyway, same thing. Uh, you know, what I'm getting at here is make sure that you set your endpoints properly. Uh, moving on, you know, we've got slider drive shafts in the center. Love the offset. So 
setup in the front, and then we have the F10 portal axles on here. And as you can see, they are composite, but man, these are done right. I mean, just look at the way that they're braced. They love the cross, uh, love the truss up there. Uh, just how we've got little extra webbing and stuff. Nice, smooth setup. Uh, love the machined oil cap in the back. Pretty neat. But uh, all metal gears on the inside. Uh, metal spool as well. Metal ring and pinion. Large output bearings and everything. I mean, just done right. Metal portal gears. Uh, even machined hexes on the outside. Eight millimeter nuts on the outside of the wheel axles everything is bulked up on this even though it's a composite axle which will slide nicely over the rocks it is set up right and then even up front here i mean look at the steering angle we've got universals in the front check out that steering angle that's absolutely insane for a crawler so it's going to give you the steering that you need and again all metal gears up front as well take a look at the the axle again with the offset all right now let's move on to the suspension and since i'm right here we have new large bore aluminum shocks on this uh it's set up so the the chassis just sits really low and you know we've got a lot of droop in the shock this thing will just you know creep over the rocks nice and low and under control as you can see the links on here are metal metal pivot ball studs in there i mean just the right setup right out of the box metal steering links pan hard bar uh three link setup in the front and then four link in the rear of course just take your time bleeding the shocks here uh you know remove the screw from the top allow the oil to seep out so it doesn't hydro lock and then you can put your screw in and uh, it's pretty easy to get those things set up but the suspension is done right i mean the the articulation on this is really good and the shocks just feel great on this so uh, I did have a little bit of leaking out of my VS410 Pro. Hopefully it doesn't happen here, but let's move on to the, the wheels and tires since uh, you know we're talking about the suspension. Uh, B-lock wheels on this, aluminum rings on both sides, and then we have the VXT tires. I gotta tell you, not my favorite tire, but uh, I do like a challenge when I'm going out driving. So they're gonna stay on there for now and I'll switch out to some Proline KM3s later on down the road. Electronics now, I went with Tekken for pretty much everything. Tekken makes some awesome crawling stuff. Uh, we've got a T180 servo for uh, the dig and the overdrive. And then for the steering, I went with a T360, an RX4 speed controller, and a Rock 412 motor. And I did go with a Tekken uh, power cell, a 3S pack to power this thing. And that's really about everything you need to know about this. Oh, uh, one thing I forgot to tell you about the axles is there are brass inserts in here as well. So those brass inserts inside the axles will uh, give it more strength and it gives it a little bit more weight down low. That covers it all. Now, I, what's really cool about this is the timing. The, it all timed out right, so I could go and take this rig up to Maine and try it on the rocks on the coastline, which is what I did with the VS410 Pro. I'm really excited to go outside and try this, so let's go have some fun.
rocks. Isn't this awesome? I'm up here in Maine along the coastline running the Phoenix on these breaker rocks and this rig has been absolutely amazing. I'm having such a great time with it and I'm going to go out and say it right here right at the beginning. This is probably one of my most favorite rigs I've ever tested. It has been phenomenal going over these rocks with the stock tires. You guys know from uh, my 410 Pro review that I wasn't a huge fan of the tires right here on these rocks. I don't know what it is, maybe because it's so much hotter today than it was last time. It's probably over 90 degrees right now, even in the morning. Uh, I'm sweating away, but this thing has been incredible. Watch this, I'm gonna do a little dig action for you. Spin that truck right around. This thing is so cool. Now, I'm just rocking the 6% overdrive right now. Just because I'm on some flat rocks, I don't really need it. But it has been just a great option to just, with the flick of a switch, get up and over what I need to. And what's really cool is, is just using the combination of the different functions, such as using the 33% overdrive in the front and then hitting that dig. I mean, it just allows you to pull the rig, you know, suck the rig down, pull it up and over some rocks. Such a cool feature. So a lot of the driving you saw early on was just with the 6% overdrive, no dig, and it shows that the rig is just super capable. So if you can't get the servos for the dig or the overdrive right out of the gate, you don't need them. You can lock those levers in place and just use the rig as is. And like I said, it is just a beast. It'll crawl over whatever in that you know stock setup. But having those extra options really helps out later on. So you know, I would probably go and throw those in. I'm not a huge fan of digs, but uh, for some reason it just works so well here. I just love using it now. And here, let's do it again. Let's just whip it around the rock here. It's awesome. I mean, look at the suspension articulation. The steering travel has just been ridiculous. I mean, there is so much steering throw to this thing. You almost don't even need the dig sometimes. And I've got this thing pretty bound up to the point where the slipper started slipping. Uh, you know, no clicks or anything like that, that uh, from the gears when I got it bound up. So we've got a tough drive line here. Let me just crawl up this little V-gap, and this will be cool. I can't really see what the ledge is like there, but we'll try to do it. Look at that. Plenty of power from that Tekken system. The Tekken system has just been on point in this, all the Tekken stuff. In fact, when I did get it bound up, the Tekken servo has a safety feature where it will actually give out, which it did. Um, so I, didn't I don't find that to be a problem. You know, when getting through V gaps or whatever, getting it bound up. But the RX4, the Rock uh, 412 motor, just so smooth. All right, guys, I'm going to pack it up for today and I'll meet you back at the studio to wrap up this review. Well, I'm back from my trip and I did manage to get a few more runs in on the rig while I was away and I just wanted to meet back here so I could go over the truck and relay anything that I found wrong with it or whatever. Uh, I told you guys about the performance during the run. Uh, I am just I'm totally impressed with this rig. Uh, I was impressed during the build. It is just a fantastic quality rock crawler. The only things I need to tell you about are uh, number one, the drivetrain uh, does seem to be a little bit noisy and maybe it's because I didn't put enough grease in there when I was building the transmission and the axles and stuff. I tend to grease my stuff on the light side, so maybe packing it a little bit more would quiet it down. Not too big of a deal. It is one solid system. Uh, the other thing I did find though that I do really need to talk to you about are the end lengths, uh, the ball ends. There is a lot of slop in some of these ball ends and it's something that you should really watch out for. You probably want to get some extra ball ends to have on hand just in case you stretch one out or even break one while you're on the trail, you can go and replace it. But everything else seems to be really solid on this rig. Uh, it has been tough. It took a lot of tough tumbles. And uh, again, this, the performance is top notch. The quality is top notch. And now I know why all my friends were reaching out to me to say that I had to try one. I really enjoyed the experience and I think I actually might like this one 
a little bit more than my Pro. So that just shows you how much I like the Phoenix. All right, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. If you picked one up or you're going to pick one up, let us know what you think about it. Uh, so other people would see, you know, what you like about the truck. If you made any changes to it, let us know in the comments section as well. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell. I'll have links in the video description for you. Give the video a like and now check out this playlist for more RC driver reviews.